Hey guys, it's Ari. You may or may not have heard of this thing called F2 Gen F prime or F I U F prime. A while ago, Jaden McNeil, famous for his um, uh, uh, posted a shit ton of videos on this, but you may not fully understand what the whole concept is. Let's go over what F2 Gen or F I U F prime is, how to do it, and whether you should. F2 Gen F prime is a way to solve the last two F to L pairs in the CFOP speed solving method. Specifically the back right pair and then the front left pair for right handed solvers, and the back left pair and front right pairs for left hand dominant solvers. We will talk about right hand dominant solvers in this video. In its simplest form, you do an F move, solve into the back right, don't do an F prime and then you just solve into this slot here, and then an F prime at the end, and you can do edge orientation and save yourself some rotations in some cases. Here are a couple of examples. Here I've got the corner stuck in the back right, facing that way, and the edge stuck here. What I can do is an F move, U prime, and then I can solve into the back, and then I can solve into the front left. I can do it a couple of ways. I can do a sledge, pair it up, and then F prime. In this case here, I have the corner in the front left slot and then the edge here, misoriented. So I can do a U prime, F to pair it up, insert it into the back, and then conveniently I have this pair pre-made, so I can just put it here, and then an F prime. Here I have this pair here. What I can do is a U prime, an F, and then I can pretend I have a free slot in the front right here, solve it into the back, and then solve into the front left. U prime, pair it up like so, R, U2, R prime, F prime. To solve this pair into the back right, I can pull the pair over here, pair it up like so, U, and then Y moves into the back, and then I can solve this final pair here by doing a U2, R, U prime, R prime to make a pair, U2, and then I can do edge control with the inverse there, and then an F prime. Here I've got a pair stuck in the front left, I can do an F, U2, R prime, U prime, R, and then solve into the front left. Here I've got the corner stuck in the back right and then the edge oriented, so I can do a U2 F prime, pair it up, and then do this final pair into the front left. Some cool tricks you can do is when you have an F2L pair like this, let's say you paired it up like so, and then you need to solve it into the back right, you can do a U prime, wide F, R, and then an S move with your left index here. Then you can do F2 Gen F prime or F I U F prime into the front left. Same goes for a joint pair, you can do a wide F, R prime, and then the S move again and then you can pair up the final pair into the front left. You can also do it as keyhole here, where you have this edge solved into the back right. You can do an F, D prime, and then insert this, R, U2, R prime. D solves into the back, and then you can solve the final pair into the front left, and then F prime. So what are the benefits of F2 Gen F prime? If you have edges or corner pieces, or both, stuck in F2L slots, you can use F2 Gen F prime to solve it, usually relatively easily rather than taking out a corner and edge and then inserting it. It's relatively finger trick friendly, as a lot of the time you set up basic cases with the edges oriented, meaning solvable with R, L, U and D moves. Sometimes it can reduce the reliance on moves with the non-dominant hand, but not always. However, U2 moves with the non-dominant hand are sometimes very, very necessary with this method, where in some cases it might be necessary to do a U2 flick with your index and middle fingers of your left hand. For instance, there's this case where you do an F, R prime, U2, R, and then you want to solve this into the front left, so you do an R, U2 prime with your these two fingers here, R prime, and then an F prime. You will also need to get quite good at doing F prime moves with your left index finger like so with this pinch. And look ahead from the third to fourth pair is dead easy, since there are no rotations. F2 Gen F prime can also be used for the final front left F to L pair without solving into the back right. One of my favourites is this case where you can do an F move, R U prime R prime to take this edge out, U2, R U2, R prime F prime. This case is pretty TPS heavy. So what are the downsides? You will need to be proficient with your standard F to L solutions in the first place. This is not a magic bullet to instantly be able to be sub X seconds. Full edge orientation can be difficult, not good for ZBLL enthusiasts, although for standard OLL and PLL last layer solvers, the partial EO can be helpful, especially if you don't like .OLL cases, although I highly advise you do learn them still. Now should I use it? This is very oversimplified, but if you are proficient with basic F2L solutions and some medium or more advanced ones, are decent at look ahead and prefer to do U moves instead of L moves with the non-dominant hand, 
this can be a very useful technique for you. There's a lot more nuance to this, as in some cases it is almost certainly better to not do f2 gen f prime. These are split pairs, but they can be quickly solved without f2 gen f prime. This solves EO. But if you were to do it with f2 gen f prime, you screw up the EO. f2 gen f prime is not a replacement for all rotations, but can be at some certain times. Now here are some good resources for f2 gen f prime. Gil Zosman's speedcubedb.com is a great resource for F2 Gen F prime cases, specifically into the front left slot, and it's also just a good resource for a lot of algorithms in general. I highly recommend you check it out. Jaden McNeil's channel also has a lot of F R U F prime stuff. Being one of the forerunners in 2019 with the method, I also have a number of general F2 L tricks, some of which have F2 Gen F prime tricks. Check out the playlist here. Thanks for watching. Use code ARI at speedcubeshop.com for a discount on your order. Like and subscribe and turn on notifications. And thank you very much for watching.